Did you know that electricity is a commodity? You know, commodities. I'm talking about oil, gold, corn, and wheat that people trade just like they trade stocks, crypto, or NFTs. However, unlike most commodities like oil, gold, corn, and wheat, electricity storage is tricky. With oil, you can store it in tanks until you need it. Gold can be stored in secure vaults. Corn and wheat can be stored in granaries or warehouses. That's not so easy with electricity. We have our AA and AAA batteries to store electricity for our remote or video game controllers. However, currently large-scale storage solutions are not yet capable of storing the massive quantities of electricity needed to meet the demands of entire cities or regions for extended periods. Some stores methods like pumped hydro stores require a lot of space. This typically isn't easy to find in densely populated areas such as cities. Some stores methods such as large-scale battery systems aren't typically great for the environment. Storing large amounts of electricity in concentrated form can pose safety risks as well. And lastly, there is cost. In addition to the storage technology itself, the extensive infrastructure to support large-scale electricity storage increases the overall cost. Electricity storage is expensive and not easy. We have promising technologies in development, but there isn't yet a widely adopted cost-effective method for storing electricity on a massive scale, which is why it must be produced and used simultaneously, making it a use-it-or-lose-it type commodity, meaning the supply must exactly meet demand in a power grid. This makes the whole process of trading electricity more dynamic. This is where spot markets, futures, and options contracts come into play. That's right, you can buy and sell contracts that represent electricity. These contracts allow you to speculate on whether the price of electricity will go up or down in the future. You don't need a power plant in your back yard to get involved in the electricity market. You can do it all through special exchanges. Two of the top exchanges for electricity trading are the CME Group and ICE. These are like virtual marketplaces where people buy and sell electricity contracts, just like Webull, TradingView, or Robinhood with stocks and options contracts. The CME Group, Chicago Mercantile Exchange Group, offers electricity futures and options contracts. ICE, Intercontinental Exchange, also provides electricity futures and options trading for various electricity markets around the world. You can also use EEX, European Energy Exchange, or Nord pool for European markets. Nodal Exchange is another popular one for North America. In order to buy and sell electricity, we need to know how to value it. This is where ISOs and RTOs come into play. ISOs are independent system operators and RTOs are regional transmission organizations. Both are responsible for keeping the power grid balanced in relation to supply versus demand, ensuring there's sufficient generation and backup power available to meet unexpected demand or generation loss. There are nine major ISOs and RTOs in North America. There is PJM, Interconnection, which serves various parts of 13 different states in the eastern U.S., mid-Atlantic, and Midwest. Remember, ISO stands for Independent System Operator. There's the MISO. M stands for Mid-Continent, which covers 15 U.S. states in the Midwest and South. ISONE operates in New England. CAISO covers the majority of California. And YISO operates in the state of New York. Southwest Power Pool, SPP, serves 14 states in the central United States. Electric Reliability Council of Texas, ERCOT, manages the electric grid in most of Texas. AESO stands for Alberto Electric System Operator, which oversees the province of Alberto, Canada. I ESO is Ontario Independent, which operates in the province of Ontario, Canada. There are smaller, more localized entities as well that are typically referred to as Local Balancing Authorities, LBAs, or Distribution System Operators, DSOs. So, electricity generators start the process by producing the electricity that we use every day. These generators can range from massive coal-fired plants to cutting-edge wind farms or solar panels. These generators don't churn out electricity for free. They want to get compensated for the energy they produce. That's where those ISO and RTOs come in. They are like the traffic controllers of the power grid. So every day, generators and other entities submit their bids to the ISOs and RTOs in what's called the day ahead market. It's like an auction where generators offer to supply a certain amount of electricity at a specific price. These bids are very important as they set the stage for the next day's electricity prices. So the RTO and ISOs take all these bids and use algorithms to figure out the most efficient and cost effective way to meet the expected demand for the electricity. This is how the price of electricity is determined. When there's high demand and not enough supply, prices go up. When there's low demand and a high supply, prices go down. So the prices influenced by this dance between the generators and the ISOs or RTOs. Let's get into how it is traded on the market. There are three types of trading when it comes to electricity, spot, futures, and options. Imagine you're a trader who buys and sells goods, and you see a batch of apples at the market being sold by a farmer. You think to yourself, these look great and are priced low. I can sell them for more than they are currently valued soon. Now think of those apple selling farmers as power plants. If they generate more electricity than they need, they sell it to the spot market instead of letting it go to waste. Just like if a farmer grows more apples than they need, they can sell it at a farmer's market. That's how spot markets work. It's like market orders and stock trading. 
With electricity trading, we aim to buy electricity when the market prices are low and sell when they are high, using supply and demand as a gauge. Traders can also find arbitrage opportunities, meaning buying in electricity markets in one region where prices are low and then selling in another region where prices are higher. CMA Group is known for its futures and options contracts, but also has a CME Direct platform that allows for spot trading in the energy market, including electricity. ICE, EEX, Nordpool, and Nordal Exchange also offer spot trading of electricity. Now let's talk about futures trading. Let's say you're at the same Apple market and you know you'll want apples in a month, but want to strike a deal with the farmer so that you can buy them now at today's prices. You can use a futures contract for that. You can also do this with electricity by agreeing to buy or sell electricity at a specific price on a future date. If you are agreeing to buy the electricity on a future date, ideally the price of electricity will go up. That way you can sell those contracts at a higher price in the future. Companies that actually use electricity will use futures contracts to lock in prices to hedge against price volatility. You can also buy options contracts, which gives you the right but not the obligation to buy a certain amount of electricity capacity at a specified price on or before a certain date. This works very similarly to trading with other commodities. The goal is to make a profit on the contract. I'll be diving into trading other commodities on this channel, so make sure to give me a follow so that you can come along on my journey learning about commodity trading.